Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to show you basically a intro to making data packs. This is just going to be fairly comprehensive and mainly cover my starter pack, which is by no means the data pack, but uh, it's just what I find useful and it's just a bunch of cool things. So if you go in the description, if you want to follow along, you can get the download for this starter pack in the link in the description and put the .zip folder into your world save data packs folder. So you go into the world save that you want to make this data pack on, you go into the data packs folder and you put the zip file here and you click extract here. Um, then once it's extracted, you can delete the zip file. Now go into it and make sure that the first thing when you click on the starter pack folder is data. So sometime for some computers, it'll say, uh, it'll say something else. It'll be like starter pack. And then when you go in it, it'll say starter pack again. So just make sure it's not a folder in a folder, it just depends on your computer. Um, but anyway, once we're in the starter pack, you can rename it to whatever you want. I'm going to copy this just for my sake. So you can rename the starter pack to whatever data pack you're working on. Maybe you want to make, uh, it doesn't matter what you're working on. I'll call it demo. Uh, hopefully I don't have one. Yep. I don't have one named demo. So once I go inside, you're going to have a bunch of stuff. So with data packs, there's a lot of things you can add to them. So I included a lot of uh, examples of the things you can add to them in this starter pack so that you have some kind of springboard, some way to work off of. Uh, so for example, this stuff is always the same pack right here is your pack.mc meta. Your description is whatever description you want, but most people aren't going to see this anyway. So then you go into data pack. So Minecraft is the safe space of default things. So if you change certain things in the Minecraft folder, this folder, then it's going to affect the actual game files. If you change things under starter, it's additional files that you added on using your data pack. Sometimes you want to change the base game files, which is what we're going to start with. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into files and we have loot tables, recipes, and tags. We're going to cover all of this just briefly. I'm not going really deep, but I'm going to cover everything in data packs that I have here briefly. So let's go with uh, tags first. Uh, no, that one's complicated. Let's go with recipes first. So you can change the default recipes of the game. Um, and I have some examples here. So if I go into my single player world and load up my single player world, I have these two recipes that I changed. So let's open them. You can use, I use Sublime Text Editor. That's what I suggest. You can get a syntax highlighter for Sublime Text Editor. Um, so this is what the JSON file looks like for arrow and leather. So what I did to arrow is I did a crafting shaped. So this is gonna change a regular crafting recipe of arrow. And what it's gonna change is it's going to make it so if you have an X here and a hashtag here, then it will craft the arrow. Now the hashtag is a stick and the X is an iron ingot. You can make the character here, whatever you want, just as long as you have a key that corresponds to the character. Um, and then you can change the result to have, you know, whatever item you want, multiple arrows, uh, whatever. So I made it give you four arrows. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a crafting table. Let's put it down and let's go here. Uh, wait, wrong world save. Um, another thing about data packs that you might not know is they only apply to the world that you have them in. So that world that I was in right there didn't have our data pack in it because I didn't put the data pack in that save. So if I give myself a crafting table, the data pack automatically is loaded when I first enter the world. So if I search arrow, well, I don't think I have the key yet. So to do an arrow, it's an iron ingot and a stick. So we put an iron ingot and we put a stick, boom, four arrows. Uh, one thing to note is this works anywhere in the slot. And that's because I removed the third line here. You can add a third line to make it take three and put an X here or something like that, or a hashtag here to cause two sticks, but then it will be locked to only having, uh, being able to be crafted in three ways instead of this, where you can move it up and everything. So that's how you deal with this. You can add one more line as I showed. And a space represents a blank spot that is uh, allowed to be anything. Um, well, not anything, it has to be blank. <laughs> so then there's other recipes. So for example, there's leather. So I made it so when you smelt rotten flesh, you get leather and you get some experience and it has a custom cooking time. So if I put a furnace in here and I get some uh, rotten flesh and I cook it 
and I'll use some wood. Then when it cooks, I will get rotten flesh. Now to get some more recipes, we're always going to be referencing one specific location. So, oh, there you go. So you get the leather. So you can work with these or you can grab your own. So if you go into your .minecraft main folder, you can go down to versions, and I'm sorry that's a little bit off the screen, but I have to. So then when you go into versions, you go into the latest, 1.14, you can open it with your archiver. And if you open it with your archiver, then what's gonna happen is it's going to pop open this whole big folder. Once you're inside this folder, you can go access assets to get some default uh, textures, which is what I use a lot. But what we're focused on, oh, let me enter it again. What we're focused on is the data. So if you access data, you can go to Minecraft and it'll give you defaults. So you can go to recipes and you can find a recipe for every item here and including the recipe for different uh, tables. So there's stuff such as, uh, it's hard to be show you, but here is red sandstone slab from red sandstone stone cutting. So there's ones for other tables as well that you can copy and then change some of the values inside it to fit what you want. So that's it for uh, recipes. Then there's loot tables. Loot tables uh, are custom things to uh, change the drops. You can change the drops of default blocks. You can change the drops of default entities. So I changed the default drop of the entity of a player so that there is a 80% chance that you get air when you kill a player, but a 20% chance that you put a player head and you make the player head have a name and the name is that player. So the player head will be the skull of the player that dies. So you people drop their skull at a 20% rate. This is just an example, but you can generate these loot tables at gen, like there's various loot table generators online. You can just Google search it, but you just put it in this folder and it'll change the default entities. Make sure that the name is uh, the same. And yet again, you can go here to in your .jar file you can go to loot tables, entities, and grab some of the defaults and mess with them if you want. Uh, same with blocks, you can mess with them as well. Um, when I changed for blocks, this is a really key one. I have two here. So I have spawner and shulker box, and these are really complicated, but basically they both do a similar thing. They look if you mine it with a specific tool. In the case of a shulker box, the tool has to have an MBT that says drop contents true. If this is true, then it takes what's inside the shulker box and pops it just like a chest would. So normally with a shulker box, it's going to, uh, when you break it, it'll drop what items are inside it, just like that. Um, it'll drop the shulker box with the items in it, like a backpack, but you can make it pop all the items out of it with that loot table, which is useful for command-based things. A uh, little more complicated, but it's good to have it there so you don't have to make it. And then the spawner gives you a spawner if you mine it with Silk Touch Big X. So now we're gonna move on to tags. So tags is a way of grouping things. You can group blocks, you can group entities, you can group functions. Uh, there's two special ones for functions that are kind of like keys, key ones that you change for functions. So starter colon main, so tick and load. So load is going to tell you which functions when you type slash reload in game or you reload, you leave and rejoin. Those functions that are listed here are going to play one time when you reload. Then in tick, these functions here are going to play every game tick, so 20 times per second during the game, which is great for repeating. So you can change the name here from starter to demo and demo. But since I changed that, it's referring to, so instead of this, we're gonna pop out of the Minecraft because we're done there. We're gonna change this to demo. So now it's demo, so it doesn't say starter pack because if everything said starter, you would get confused. So under demo, we actually have a few things in here. So we have a few tags of our own. So these are ones added not to the Minecraft namespace. These are custom tags. Um, I guess one thing I forgot to cover, sorry, is tagged blocks, but we'll cover them again. So tagged blocks, this is a way of grouping blocks together. So anytime I reference slash execute if block if this is hashtag Minecraft colon glass, it is referring to every type of glass and every color of glass. Um, so that's a way to group blocks together. So you don't have to say if it's stone, if it's dirt, if it's, so it's just all together. Um, and you're gonna do a similar thing in your own namespace tags. So there's blocks. This would be an example of a tag. This one is going to test for glass, but it's not 
based off of the default namespace. With most creations, you don't want to use your default namespace. So it's something like uh, starter glass, because I didn't type reload, so the namespace is still starter. So starter glass will also do the same thing, but it's not messing with the defaults. Then there's also item grouping. So this is sticks and stones. So it groups a stick and a stone. So clear at s hashtag starter sticks and stones. So it'll clear all sticks and stones. So if I put a stone and I put a stick, it'll clear sticks and stones. <laughs> Pretty simple explanation, but you can mess with that to create your own tags. Then there's also ways to group entities. So this is dorks. <laughs> it'll kill villager, sheeps and pigs. So if I put a villager, a sheep, and uh, a cow, then I put them all in here, slash kill at E, type equals hashtag starter, colon dorks. It will kill not the cow, but the sheep and the, the, sheep and the uh, pig, and I think I killed an entity over there as well. Um, so yeah, so that's a way to group entities. Um, and that's basically everything with tags. Now there's two other things, advancements. Advancements you can make using generators online. There's a custom uh, one that I have downloaded that's really nice. Uh, you'd have to search it. I'll try and put a link in the description to it. Um, but it looks like this and it lets you create advancements and then you would just copy and paste the JSON files into this advancements folder. Um, but the generator looks like this and you can click it and you can select different criterias. Um, and then lastly, functions. So these are just things that play commands in order sequentially. So in init, if I say, say hi, say yo, say test, it'll say hi yo test when I reload because the init function plays when I reload and the server says hi yo test because when you play a function, it doesn't know who played it. So you'll have to specify who played it before. So it just says server played it. In main, I can say make it repeat stuff. So I can say, say, annoying now it'll spam annoying over and over in the chat 20 ticks per second um, so yeah so this is just stuff that you can mess with now if you want to make more functions you can copy this paste it rename it to test this guy will will not play at all unless I make him play in the main or I make him play from the init and you can just build your way from there making it a tree of functions and you can also put folders one Let's put test inside one and test is going to say, say found me. And then let's say, say not me. Okay. So the type reload now to access these functions, I type slash function and I can do function then the namespace demo. So if I do demo test, it'll say not me demo one slash. Now for folders, you put a slash, meaning the thing before it was a folder. And then the last word is the name of the file and that will say found me. All right, so that's pretty much everything in the basics of data packs. Uh, it's not really how functions work in data packs. That's way more complicated, um, but this is just a general overview of how to mess with data, data packs. So if you guys found that useful, uh, leave a like, subscribe maybe for more. I think I might do a more complicated functions tutorial, kind of going over like the theory behind functions and some really cool things you can do because of the way they work. But other than that guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time, peace.